Mitamamon is here, but first let's get the elephant out of the room. Yes. I don't have a beard. <laughs> I am growing a back before you guys talk smack to me. I had to actually shave because of a job thing. Anyway, this is exactly why I want to live off of this, but I can't. But here we are. Anyway, Mitamamon EX5. This card is actually nuts. Mitamamon allows you to play Digimon level 4 or lower. Give them rush when you play them, allowing you to kind of have a wide board and swing your opponent all at one go. And mixing it in with Kentaros is absolutely nuts. Let's get into this deck profile. Let's start off with the DGX of this deck profile. We're doing the Kiaromon. The new lineup with the EX5 has a lot of either one attacking or one digivolving trash top card of your security stack, which triggers this Kiaromon. And when you trash a card from your security stack, you give a Digimon jamming. And this is very important. I said it gives a Digimon jamming. Keyword is everything in this TCG. So you're able to give it to another Digimon if you have another Digimon giving it jamming as well. It's really nice. With the level fours, we are showcasing the EX5. So we're going to start with the EX5 Kudamons. This one, if you have on play, this Kudamon on play, if you have six or less total security cards between yourself and your opponent, then you get to play a yellow tamer for free from your hand, which is really good because this card sets itself up for you to warp into Kentaros. And then with the Mitamamon allowing you to play it for free. Oh, yes, you will have two level sixes in one turn. Then here, right here, one attacking if there are six or total fewer cards in both players security stack, one of your opponent gets minus 2000 DP, which is really nice. So this deck also focuses a lot of DP reduction but not that much to the point where you can pop level sixes or level seven. It's enough for you to swing over them, but not totally delete them by DP reduction. The following Kudamon that we're using, BT13, four of. This one is a searcher. On play, you reveal three cards and you can add one yellow card, one yellow Digimon with vaccine and its trait and one yellow tamer, which is very good because you can get up to two pieces with this Kudamon, allowing you for faster playing. The Inherit is the same as the other Kudamon. If you and your opponent have a total of six security cards or less, then when you attack, you can give one Digimon minus 2000 DP. Lastly, the promo Kudamons, you just have to with this because you're trashing a lot of security. And this one, when you play it, if you have a Kentaros in the trash, you're able to tuck it underneath your deck and then you get to recover one. So it's really good to recover your security stack. And then it has an on deletion effect as an Inherit that when it gets deleted, you give minus 1,000 to uh, one of your opponent's Digimon, which isn't much, but I mean, there's Digimon that have 1,000 DP, right? So there's that. That's it for the rookie lineup. We're just sticking to Kudamons. You could use the on-play one. The Mitamamon would have kind of good synergy with it, but I think you're only decreasing by 2,000 DP. It's not, it's not much. And then it doesn't have an inherit. So if you're going to build on top of that, it's kind of, it's just a Kudamon, really. Moving on to the champion lineup. The new EX5 Lyamon, not to be confused with Lyloman, Lyamon. And I gotta be honest here. When I first read one attacking by trashing a card from your security stack, if one of your opponents did my minus 4,000, I'm like, why the hell would I want to do that? But then I remember the Kiaro gives you jamming. So I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Now you could swing over uh, 7K and below or just pop floodgates. So this is actually a really good one attacking effect. And then the Inherit is the same as a Kudomans. If you have six total security cards or less between both of you, minus 2,000 to a Digimon. So now, potentially as an Inherit, you could give something minus 4K. And these are good because they're also a play cost of four. You're not really going to drop them, but if you brick, you can. You have that option to. Leading on to the new Repomon from EX5. This one has a one attacking. This card is nuts. When you attack with this Repomon, you trash a card, a security card from your from your stack, and then when you would digivolve, when a Digimon would digivolve, you reduce it by two. And again, keyword here: when one of your Digimon would digivolve, reduce the digivolution cost by two. So it doesn't even have to be him. You could actually have a whole nother stack. Swing with this one. Give yourself jamming with the Kyaro, and you could basically training boost effect here Just nuts the inherit is the same as the liamon reduce dp if you have six security or less between both players to round it up here these are flex spots 
you can play whatever you want. I've seen people play um, the Greymon that got hit where you could play a Tamer from your security, look at through your security stack. You could play, I don't know, whatever. But I'm sticking to two hybrids. And I may get some pushback here because they're not searchable by the Kudamon. It's not a vaccine. It's a hybrid. So people have been playing the security Leomon, which I thought that was pretty cool. But it's I'd rather close game out. And then there's ways to get like a buttload of memory. So now when you're swinging so much, you just have bam hybrid for game. I just come on as a as a Digimon player. There's no other better feeling than going hybrid for game. Omni Blitz. Yeah, one of those two. But that's it for my champion lineup right there. All right, so aside me not having a beard, have we noticed my new merch? Agumon wearing Luffy clothes. How awesome is that? This is new merch that I just dropped not too long ago. Feel free to check it out at my merch shop, spideyshop.com. I'll link it down below. I love this sweatshirt. It's really warm. I haven't taken it off since I got it, but I mean, you probably can't see it, but it's like really, it's like kind of that cottony when you put it on. And of course, there's a siren passing by. I don't know if you guys can hear. Anyway, let's continue on to this deck profile. For the ultimates, man, this cheating man is so busted. I love this card. When digivolving, you trash a card from your security when you can. And when you do that, you can unsuspend. So now with the Repomon here, it's kind of a little combo there, right? But you end up swinging with the Repomon, trash a security, digivolve, trash another security, unsuspend. And if you want, you can swing again. Or when you go into your Mega, they're unsuspended, allowing you to <laughs> keep hitting. Two of the OG, not really OG, but the BT-13 cheating man, because it has barrier. On deletion, you can play a Kudamon from your hand or trash, which is really nice. Because if that Kudamon, that this promo Kudamon is in the trash, you do have a Kentaros and you want to recover. And I can go ahead and recover, set yourself up for when you go to your Megas, allowing you to trash cards and do stuff. Pretty nice. The reason I don't run it at four is because I want some a little recovery here. Also kind of decreasing DP and this Magna. It's pretty clutch. Mind you, dropping an ultimate by four. Then Mitamaman having barrier. So even if they try swinging at it, you're not going to get rid of it. They did you, they did digivolve it. Well, now you still got a level five and now you can do it all over again. This Magnamon, what it does, let me fix this because I'm kind of OCD here about this. And it's very bright. Anyway, if you have five or fewer security cards on player or when digivolving, you get to recover a security stack which is awesome. Then after that, for every card in your security stack, you give minus DP reduction to a Digimon, which you're not really too worried about that. It comes in handy for sure, because then if you kind of do the Magna and then you go into Kentaros, and if you have three or four security and you know, it, it, it adds up. Okay. You just have to be careful with the Ace, right? Because this is the Magna Angemon Ace. So if it does get deleted, removed from the field, bounced, go to the bottom of your deck, you will lose three memory. But I love this because, like I said, it is a target. He is a vaccine. So really good, really good tech card for sure. I was trying 3-3 three, three here with the cheating man. But this guy's one digivolving is too nuts because really you would only want to use the BT-13 one if you don't have a mega, but you want to build up and he's already there. Kind of protect yourself but more than likely you're gonna have a mega because you run eight in this deck build so being able to unsuspend yourself and kind of hurrying the trashing process of your security because that's what you want to do with this build is better it's just better it is better that's just me and i didn't even talk about the most important part here this dude's inherit if there's a total of six security cards or less in both player security stack when attacking once per turn you can recover a card that is very good Kentaros was missing that because he was the only one the bt13 one he's the only one that can recover himself and then aside from other cards as well but this is so nuts because when you have zero zero security cards you're still able to do the one attacking of the Kentaros or the mitamaman because you swing you would trigger chirin's bond one attacking first recover a card and now you get to trash them from the Megas and now therefore activating their effects again. 
which is why he's just ultimately better and not to mention it just keeps you in the game longer let's get on to the bread and butter of this deck with my boy or girl or god whatever you are mitamaman oh my goodness this card is nuts it has a one digivolving and one attacking effect once per turn by trashing the top card of your security stack you may play one yellow level four or lower card from your hand without paying for the cost Digimon played by that effect gets Rush for the turn. Another very important keyword here, for the turn. So if you end up playing, for example, a Kazemon, because it is a level 4, you Digivolve, and you can still swing because it has Rush for the turn. It's not like the Skull Greymon from BT14, where on deletion, play an Agumon, and it gains Rush. This is for the turn, which is really nice. So the the... So the rush carries over. All turns, all of your Digimon gain barrier. If you don't know what barrier is, barrier is if your Digimon is going to get deleted by battle. If I'm not mistaken, you know what? I can pull up the level fives and it says it right here. So barrier, when this Digimon would be deleted in battle by trashing the top card of your security stack, prevent that deletion. That is what barrier does, which is really nice because it goes very well with this next effect, opponent's turn. All of your opponent's Digimon with levels greater than or equal to the total cards in both players' security stack gain security attack minus two. And I really did think of doing a Venus version of this. So let me explain this a little more simple. If you have two security cards right there, I know you can't really tell because it's yellow and your opponent also has two security cards. Now all your opponents level four or higher get security attack minus two. So this would mean that only level threes can attack. It was really nice. This is a really good spot where you want to have your security at until you go for lethal. And then when there's only three, now none of your opponents Digimon can attack. There is a way around this. And that's if you're playing against uh, D Reaper. The reason I say that is because they're all levelless. So this wouldn't apply to them. They would still be able to just swing over it. That is how that Mitamaman works. We'll get into the combo, combo, really good combos, after I just finish the deck profile, which we're going to lead on to my boy, Kentauros. Really, really cool. This is the BT13 one. So as an on-play and when digivolving, if there are six or fewer cards in both players' security stack, gain three memory, which is really nice because he costs five memory and then after that you reveal one card from your hand and if it's yellow you get to place it on top of the security stack he sets himself up for his one attacking once per turn which is when you attack once per turn you can trash a card from your security stack and if you do this Kentaros unsuspends and you give one of your opponent's digimon minus 7000 dp which is fantastic because now you can swing over high level digimons doesn't really matter too much because he's at 13. So even if with one inherit, two inherits, they could give minus four. Adding that on, you could pop something with 11k, 12 sometimes. But it's really nice because you swing twice. Now think of that little stack that I was doing with the Repamon. You swing, you trash a card, you digivolve to the new uh, Chirinmon, trash another card, unsuspend. If you have enough memory, now you digivolve, gain three memory back, swing after you recovered one trash it on suspend and then swing again that was four attacks right there it's nuts that's why i play the hybrid because that would be just the last eh, chip but i understand if you don't want to run the hybrids because it is in vaccine and it kind of doesn't jive well but it's been working for me let's move on to the tamers the tamers pretty plain and simple you already know we have to run the samson and you have to run four the reason being is because this Samson has his own effect of when this card would be trashed from your security stack, you get to play it. Now, you don't have to play it if you don't want to. It does say you may. So if you're worried your partner has your partner, if you're worried your opponent has Death X and you already have like one Richard Samson and you kind of don't want to widen your board, you don't have to. But point is, you're running it because you're trashing from your security stack, therefore playing it for free. Start your main phase if there is six or fewer security cards between both players then you gain one memory and then the main effect where you're really running this card is if there's six or fewer security cards in both players if there's a kuraman in the field you can suspend richard 
and you can warp it to Kentaros. And you do just pay its Digivolution costs. In this case, it'd be five. And then you gain three memories. So you would be Digivolving for two from rookie to level six. It's just nuts. Insane. And it's good because it gives you the memory. So you you can't, you're not going to get memory choked. Another important reason why you want to be consistently trashing your own security to meet that requirement. As you've seen, it is a threshold of six security cards or less. And I don't know why I picked these up because I'm not done with the Tamers. I just ended up sticking with the TK. When you play it, you recover one. And for sure, you're going to have, you're going to start at three memory, which might be better. Instead of a uh, circumstantial cards that give you memory, this is just flat out you start at three. This TK, you play it, you search through your security stack, you get a card that's yellow. If you get one like that, if you get a yellow card, you get to recover one. That's it for the Tamers. You can choose to cut down a one. You can choose to not run any if you want to run other stuff. Really, the key, key ones are the Samson, but being able to start at three is really nuts, especially if I'm telling you, you can go from uh, Kudaman to uh, Kentaros for two instead of five. Yeah, you want these. So the reason I'm running that BT1 TK is because of the blinding rays, and I honestly want to run more, and I might, but you're going to see why I kind of split it. Two blinding rays, you trash top card of your security stack, then you gain two memory. Emphasis on then because... If you play Blinding Ray and you have no security stack, it's two separate sentences. It tells you, trash top card security stack, period. Then, gain two memory. So even if there's nothing to trash, you gain that two memory. Really good, and they cost zero. The only downside is, is there's no security effect, right? Even putting it on your hand, that'd be busted. So the TK is just going to help you get it from the security stack if it is in the security stack. I am going to tech in one Waverin's Breath. Waverin's Breath, you give a Digimon minus 15,000 DP for the turn. That knocks out Death X. That knocks out Quartz. Basically, almost any Digimon besides, I think, Oryukens are 16. Palad, uh, Paladin Mode is 16. Those are the only ones that it's not going to get deleted. You can get locked out with Quartz because you don't reduce enough DP to bring them down to zero and delete them. So you really do need a way to go over that, and that is how, which is a Waverin's Breath. It kind of sucks because I'm only running one. You're kind of like, well, what's kind of the point, right? You might as well just kind of do three or do something else. One is still good enough because you can get it from the TK if it's in your security stack. If you don't want to pay the eight, there's, as you've seen, there's ways to put cards in your security stack via the Kentaros. So now you put it there and you just let your opponent, opponent hit it which is also good. Last but not least, three of the Odin's Breath. Four is too much. You can get away with four. It's good, but then you'll you'll have multiple in your hand, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But because I always at least see one in my hand, I just chose to go for three. This one, when it gets trashed by an effect from your security stack, it plays. What Odin's Breath does is it gives one of your opponent's Digimon minus 3,000 DP, then if there's six or fewer security cards in both player security stack, all of your opponent's Digimon get minus security attack plus minus one, not plus minus one. So this card is very, very good, especially late game or if they're going to if they have a wide board and they can go for lethal. Odin's Breath just stops that unless they get security attack plus one, then you're kind of so well. <laughs> and now I know what you're thinking. Why aren't you running training cards? The level four already helps you reduce digital evolution costs. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, well, now you could do that. And then you can do the training. Go into Kentaros for actually two or one or three. Like, what the hell? It works. But I prefer having the blinding race because the training, you kind of play it. And then you have to wait a whole another turn to get to memory. And this deck can be very aggressive. And I would like the memory sometimes like right then and there. Uh, because then if you're at three, which we'll get into the combo, you play a blinding race. Sometimes you end up playing both. You go up to six. There's so much that you can do. And I'm going to show you exactly how much you can do. So let me show you that combo real quick. If you start your turn, turn, turn. If you start your turn at three because of the TK, you have the Repamon in the back. You move up. And now you go ahead. I guess I should set up some damn security here. 
you end up swinging trash a card you trash doesn't matter what it is now you give yourself jamming swing you're good you're safe you don't die digivolve to the new cheating man for one draw uses one digivolving you'll trash the other card and now here too mind you if it is an odin's breath that gets trashed that way it does trigger now you'll give all your uh, enemies opponents digimon minus security attack plus one and maybe pop even a floodgate which could be good especially if you're about to use um blinding ray and then speaking of blinding ray if we end up now using one there's nothing to trash but i'm still going to gain the two memory and there we go now we're at four we'll digivolve for three one two three we draw now here the when digivolving you're not going to be able to play because you have no security stack but this is what i was talking about with the new cheating mon you attack your trigger cheatings first recover a card from your hand and now you can end up putting a richard in your security stack activate mitamamon's one attacking boom now you play a richard and now you use mitamamon's effect if you didn't have a richard or let's say you know with something else you play the kudamon then you can even play now richard if you meet the qualifications which is uh six security cards or uh less between both players you play it for free and now there let's say you ended up drawing another blinding ray and now you go to three and this is why i am contemplating on running three instead of two and now you get to warp after you check security of course into kentaros for five and then since you have six or less total, you gain three memory, you go back to one, and now you can place a card or whatnot. We'll place a Kudum on there. And now you swing again. You get to unsuspend by trashing the card. Right? Trash it. And now you get to swing it again. And now here is why third blinding ray might come in handy, because now if you end up playing it. You go back to three and if you do have the hybrid in hand now you can go over the tk or the samson since you have one already you'll go over here and then swing again there bam how many swings was that one two three four <laughs> and then so i mean in the beginning you're going to be chipping anyway what's nice is that even if you're a digimon or suspended you have barrier here you have barrier here because he gives all your yellow digimon barrier you just got to make sure you recover. And with this, let's say you didn't have the Kumama, you didn't have any Richards or anything like that. And uh, we'll just put one there. Let's say you still have some security. Why not? You have some security there. You end up digivolving for three. You go to zero, right? So you do it when digivolving. Now you trash, in this case, Odin's Breath. You can play a hybrid or any level four. And it gets rushed. So in this sense, let's say you ended up playing another Repamon. You can attack if you want, but then you're going to run the risk of getting yourself deleted. So then you would swing, activate the one attacking, you know, go through that motion. Put a Richard Sampson if you have one now. And now if it turns over, if you by chance, let's say you have zero security and your opponent gets rid of the Mitamamon, he ends up uh, de digivolving it or you know reducing its dp but let's say you got the digivolved now you're wide open you ended up playing that level four all they need to do is swing one more time you just blast evil into the magna it's going to give you one security but it's better than you having a zero and now you can give one of your opponents minus one right but it's just more for that quick recovery and then just being able to go into the level five right after there when it's your turn this deck does struggle with Leomon. I don't know. I'm telling you, when I made that Leomon deck profile, I knew it was going to be that that boy is indomitable, de digivolving on, on deletion, bouncing things back to the hand. Like, it's just nuts. If you haven't seen it, check it out. If you want to see some Edamon action, some Monkey King business, go check that video out as well. I will see you guys in the next video.